Hi guys and welcome along. We're in that crossover of seasons where autumn comes into winter and we've got browns and greens and oranges and lovely pale woody colours all over the place. So it's time to start with some winter watercolour botanicals. Let's start with the foliage I guess. So we've got some beautiful bits and pieces we've picked up from the dog walk and let's get your paints and let's get going. Well there's no denying it, winter is on its way and all the beautiful bits of Christmassy foliage, I will say the word Christmas because let's face it, many of us are interested in learning some of these bits so that we can make some Christmas card designs. Um, so we've got some lovely fur with a pine cone. You've all learnt the pine cone, so we won't be focusing too much on that today. In fact, this is going to be a sort of simple, slightly loose uh, approach to painting all these. So we've got the fur, and then we've got some holly with some berries. Whoops, and it's very prickly. We have got some spruce, which is the classics of Christmas tree. And then we've got some bracken, which is sort of dried. Um, I, I like to think of this as sort of burnt bracken. And then we're going to also do some mistletoe. I haven't managed to get my hands on any of that yet, but let's uh, get on with this. So I'm going to start with the uh, fur here. So this has got really long needles, really, really beautiful. Let's have a little go. So we're going to start off with, we need a bit of colour for our stalk. Um, I've got a slightly muddy burnt sienna there. Let's bring that down here. Perfect. And then I've got some sort of greeny bluey tones there as well, which is all good. So I'm going to start with my size two brush because we're not going too small scale or detailed. It's a two pronged approach. And I'm going to start off with a paler colour. And this is actually not too piney. This green is quite yellowy. And I am just going to paint long needles up the fur here. Whilst it's all still wet, there's going to be a bit of blend, which is very cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. And at this point, the needles all look quite sort of spaced out, but do not fear, we've got plenty more coming. Also looks a bit fern-like, um, but if you notice, the needles all sort of grow up uh, in the direction of the end, but when they get to the end, they sort of, <clears throat> they fan out and stop. They don't sort of taper up to a point, so they're, they're quite broad at the top. I'm also making sure as I touch the branch with the tip of my brush, I then squish it down just a fraction as I paint those bristles. And I'm going to paint them overlapping the ones I've already painted as well. That's absolutely fine. Just don't sort of mess about and overdo it too much. The whole point of loose watercolour is it works if you are just using the lightest of touches. down the bottom. Now on this branch there is also just these little nobbles up and down each side. So I've just got a little bit of burnt sienna mixed in with Prussian blue just to get a few of those little knobbly bits on the side covered. Okay, we're going to let that just dry for a little bit and we're going to move on to the next one, which I think, let's go for the holly, shall we? And then we can layer up the second layer for that. Okay, so holly is one of those sort of, it's a leaf that a lot of people think is very, very hard to do. And I'm, yeah, I it's a slightly tricky one, but I actually think the best thing is 
not to overthink it. Um, now you can do the sort of classic, quite cartoonish um, point, point, point out. But actually when you look at a holly leaf, it's quite different to what we think it is. So I'm going to show you how I do the holly leaf. So I'm getting just some colors mixed up because there is quite a lot of sort of yellowy green down the middle. And we can't forget the stalk as well. So let's do Got a little sort of ridged stalk, a little bit of the burnt sienna, little bits. Okay, nice and wet. And we're going to start with a stalk and a central line. And then I'm going to use the belly of the brush to create. those points and then I'm just going to join it up. You see by using the belly of the brush you get that slight curl as well which is kind of what I think a lot of people forget is there is a sort of roundness to a holly leaf and then what I'm going to do I'm going to drop in a little bit of this Prussian blue green mix and just get a little bit extra spike in there and then if you want to be really clever there we go first holly leaf looking very nice and we'll drop in just a little bit of that dark green with it too Our central line, and then it's almost like doing lots of little smooth sided leaves and joining them all up together. That's what it feels like, but yeah, I think it's so important to look at the real thing when you are painting something that is so um, widely recognisable. It's a bit like I was painting a robin recently, a little bird, um, again for a Christmassy commission, and I looked and I was really surprised at actually the, a lot of differences, a lot of surprises in the colours, in the sort of placement of the, the, red, the red chest, the famous red breast. Okay, and then we're going to just create that central line and then let's give ourselves some more spikes. That's really nice. And then of course we can't forget the berries. So let's have a look. The berries are on their own little stalks. Right, let's get some cadmium red. Lovely bright, bright red. And with the same size two brush, I'm going to paint a little shape that uses the belly of the brush, squishes down and then curls round up just using the tip and you get that lovely bit of unpainted shine. I quite like it if your berries end up bleeding into one another or even to the leaf because you just get a little bit of the darkness because what I was going to do is just add a tiny bit of that in there. And of course you could just add a few more in. They don't all have to be attached like that. Okay, that's looking nice. We can revisit this 
and get some extra layers in. So this time I want to have a slightly fresher green. Not too strong though. And just add in more needles and they don't have to be sort of alternating. They just need to be more of them. And of course this time, because our layer underneath is dry, we can also add them sort of covering the stem itself a little bit. So they're not just coming out to the side. And of course this green can also be used as a bit of an accent for needles that you want sort of out on their own there. Make sure you don't just have all the needles going at the same angle and direction. So yeah, as I said, if you want to learn a really detailed pine cone, only the other day, so it's a very recent YouTube tutorial I've got on the flowers and foliage playlist, you can learn a really nice pine cone. Okay. Let's move on. What have we got next? A bit of burnt bracken. So that beautiful golden color. I think it's something that a lot of people forget about um, around winter is everyone's focusing on the lovely sort of greeny, bluey, frosty colors of pine and holly. And there are all these amazing dried out plants from the previous season that are still hanging around. And they're just wonderful as an accompaniment to wreaths and garlands. So let's have a go. So I'm gonna do this one just sort of up the middle. So we've got a quite dilute central stem. And of course, it's all a bit curlier and drier this time. And I'm going to do a central line and I've cleaned my brush off. And I'm just using the wetness from my brush to spread that color out and then just get a little bit of color and send that up the middle. Okay, this one's going to take a little bit of time, so I think what I'm going to do is keep painting and come back to you when it is done. Okay, we're just at the last one. So, adding wet colour. If your line has dried up already, that's fine. You can just add more water and colour with your brush. all the paint flood out so that's looking really cool and that was all done with the large brush um, but now I will get a slightly smaller brush into play because I'm going to add just a little bit more detail up the stem because it does have a cool sort of ridged appearance there there we go 
that's the one I wanted. And it just helps tie in those colours that we've got nice and dark up the stem. really is a, an amazing array of sort of slightly charred colours. So there we go, that's another lovely bit of wintry foliage to include. Okay, we're nearly there. Now we've got the spruce. Spruce is a very similar approach to the fir, but just smaller needles and a slightly different structure. Um, it's a slightly thinner branch as well. So let's have it coming down and forked out like that. So I've got my colours and we're just going to start adding shorter needles and just like with the fur using the wetness already there on the page. The needles all tend to go sort of in the same direction and they taper a bit at the top to make a sort of nice-ish point. It's a little bit more uniform than the fur. And whether you prefer doing your needles starting from the branch and working outwards, or if you like doing it like this, where you're coming in, that's all good. You'll often find that just depending on the angle that you're painting, you might change your mind anyway. Just sort of curling up a little bit. Quite often on the page, there's enough there already in terms of color. So you don't need to be going back into your palette too often. Okay, just like with the fur, we're gonna leave that one to dry and we will come back to it at the end. So mistletoe is a really, really fun one. And mistletoe is such a, well, it's a unique shape. I don't see many other sort of, um, duplicated leaf growth with the little berries at the, at the sort of apex each time. I just find it a really fascinating plant. So we're going to start with a stalk and then it's going to sort of horseshoe out. And then we're going to have the lovely sort of teardrop leaves. And you can see that I've left little gaps at each apex because that's where we're gonna pop the berries in. So I will just add a few more. So I'm using a sort of yellowy green, which is created by sap green and green gold. But then I'm going to just drop in a little bit more actual green, sap green, just to shape it a little bit. And then to create the little berries, I'm going to use yellow ochre and I'm going to paint them in with a little unpainted sliver so that they get a nice bit of shine. So 
And that is a really nice, simple little bit of mistletoe, but I do like getting just a tiny bit more detail in there, so it's a little bit of shine for you. Okay, so let's get back to this spruce and that will be us done. So I'm going to take a slightly smaller brush this time and I'm going to just use pure sap green. And I'm going to enjoy just going nicely and measured, trying not to just sort of be in the alternated gaps all the time. And of course there are the ones where you can just sort of go over the top of the branch as well, because it's not just side to side, is it? If you're ever wondering when your page is dry enough to do a layering over the top, the best thing to do is to hold it up to the light and to angle it and you'll soon see if any of the page is reflecting in the shine of the light and if it is it's still wet. have to end up getting my hand in slightly peculiar angles. I will just turn the page around just so I'm not going to smudge. Oh that's it, I managed to get my <laughs> I managed to get my arm in the green paint which is excellent. I will just finish off. That's a, that's a first for me, getting my arm in a full blob of brand new sap green paint because I topped up the palette this morning thinking, oh yeah, I need a bit more green. Well, I definitely used it. Okay, everyone, there we have five winter greens that will take you through your garland and wreath painting and I can't wait to get more festive with you all. Thanks so much for watching. Those bits of greenery will be a really fantastic basis for any of your winter watercolour projects coming up over the next few months. Um, I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel because your support enables me to keep making these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed the video then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on and of course what you'd like to see me painting for you guys in the upcoming tutorials. And um, hit the subscribe button and of course you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye!